just six days before the nation's first all-race balloting. Political violence may have obscured the fact that the vast majority of South Africans, black and white, want to vote. And in the end, that has drawn in political leaders all across the spectrum. They have misgivings about one another and about democracy, but they don't want to wind up as the odd men out. We cannot kill to establish a democracy. Stop this killing. It'll be good for the country not to tamper with the Zulu nation. He is a conservative white Afrikaner, the general who led South Africa's armed forces when apartheid policies made the white man king. But he has lots in common with this black Zulu chief who fought apartheid and who only today launched his campaign after long boycotting next week's election. I did this for you, for your children. Both leaders have a deep fear of Nelson Mandela and concern that elections will mean a loss of power and identity for the people they represent. If you apply the one man, one vote majority rule, you very often get tyranny and oppression. And this is what we are afraid of. Retired General Constant Pilyun is a reluctant politician, urging whites to talk before they fight. He has contempt for extremists who have already taken up arms. Phil Yoon's Freedom Front Party appeals to Afrikaner farmers who have a passion for the land. This rich land has been prized and fought over by South Africans for centuries. White settlers and their children, now only 15% of the population, today control more than 75% of South Africa's land. I love this land. I'll defend this land with, with every little bit of blood I have in myself. Seven million Zulus live in the fertile Natal province. Too many people on not enough land. But even in apartheid, their leader, Mangasutu Butulezi, had a handsome seat of government and status running a separate Zulu homeland. We want autonomous regions because um, that is the only way in which the people of this region will be happy. What's this down here? Happiness has been scarce in the Natal province where burnings, beatings, and political murder are common. In Kwamashu, five houses of Nelson Mandela supporters were burned the day we were there. Political intolerance led to arguments, led to fights, then led to the houses being burned down. I don't know how we get down here, really. Well, I think we just keep going, huh? And if there's snakes? Pumla Alpman, a peace monitor, led us to a truck where two Budalese supporters were burned to death. That may have provoked the house burnings, she says. The black community has been through a lot of pain, and for them not to want change is quite strange. The smallest victims of political strife end up at refugee centers. One month old Namplundo is without his mother. She went mad when their house burned and was hospitalized. The children repeat an English phrase from a Mandela speech. Peace in our land. For Chief Butulezi, who feared the demise of his Zulu homeland in the new South Africa. For General Phil Yoon, who wants his grandchildren to grow up in the new South Africa. For both, in the end, it seemed better to take a chance on future risks than cling to the certainties of the past. Both will still fight for separate black and white homelands, each for his own reason, but they'll fight as potential allies in the new South African government. So, Zulu Chief Butulezi's name and picture will be added to the ballot. The Nkatha line will be pasted on below 18 other parties, including the Soccer Party and the KISS Party. Keep it straight and simple. Now, Butulezi's there, along with Constant Phil Yoon, Nelson Mandela, and President de Klerk, all taking a chance on a multiracial democracy. Connie? And you just spend a week in the country, and from what we've been hearing these past few days, all sides are coming together. Is that the reality, or will it be a different story after the election is over? Could be a different story after the election is over. Here's one way to look at what's happening in South Africa. They have had, although many in South Africa would like to admit it, a low-intensity civil war going on for a very long time. A lot of killing still going on there, and has been for seemingly forever. Now, the question is whether after the election is over, whether this low-intensity civil war continues, and if so, for how long, and does it, could it balloon into a full-scale civil war of the sort Angola has had? 
doesn't have to be. You look at Zimbabwe, what used to be Rhodesia, everybody thought there'd be a civil war there forever. Hasn't turned out to be the case. Whites and blacks get along very well in Zimbabwe. No one should m make any mistake or have any erroneous view of South Africa. It remains a dangerous place. Hope is running neck and neck with danger. I think hope will prevail, but there are all kinds of questions. For example, in Nelson Mandela's party, there are elements who have very high expectations of immediate big gains for blacks, and Mandela has to handle that after the election. It won't be easy. We've outlined what the Zulus want, what some of the whites want. It all hangs in the balance. All right. Thank you, Dan. Stay with us now for more of the CBS.